Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Irina and today I'm gonna show you some amazing transformations of cheap plastic toys into gorgeous Christmas decor. This year I came across some charming vintage cars at Dollar Tree. They are very cheap but look nice, so I couldn't resist the temptation to repaint them and use in Christmas decor. I'll be using some homemade chalk paints today. This summer I tried many homemade recipes of chalk paints, cause where I live ready-made chalk paints cost a fortune and the recipe I like most is based on white clay or kaolin. Very cheap, easy to prepare and working well. I had some leftover paint after these experiments and I took this chocolate brown color for a primer coat. Thanks to the addition of white clay, paint adheres very well to the surface and doesn't slip even from smooth plastic. I'll show the recipe when preparing the other colors. So the homemade chalk paint recipe is one part white cosmetic clay, kaolin, one part water and two three parts paint. First stir the clay with water so that there are no lumps and then add some paint. I'm going to need ivory and red colors for today. I dilute the red paint right into the jar with the remnants of paint. I just bought myself a new jar and I'll leave this one for chalk paint. And I want also light ivory color, so I'm mixing two tablespoons of white paint and one spoonful of rich ivory color. So I'm making the first car red classic look for Christmas. First I paint in red into layers to get a more or less uniform color. Next I'll be using the blending technique that is usually shown for painting furniture with chalk paints. I need here two colors, I'll be using red and brown. First apply red to the desired area. Immediately before the paint has dried, apply brown along the contour and blend brown into red until you get nice transition of colors. You can add more red and more brown until you like the result. Just remember to change the brushes and use separate brush for every color. I accentuated the areas around the perimeter with brown and made the center red. This makes a very beautiful effect. If the paint doesn't blend well, just moisten the brush with water. For this technique, best is to use flat brushes with even tip. I decided to make the second car turquoise. I decided to blend it with the same chocolate color. And to be honest, with this turquoise paint I was worn out. This one is ready-made paint I bought some time ago and its quality wasn't very good, so it had very bad coverage. I applied maybe four layers until it got an even color and when blending it worked very badly too. The color was very transparent and because of this it was important possible to make a smooth blending, my homemade chocolate paint overlapped it and some stripes and spots constantly appeared. I was pissed I had taken it. It would have been better if I had mixed the homemade one too. Let the cars dry and paint the remaining details. Here I used ordinary acrylic paints already. I painted turquoise car wings, wheels, bumpers, headlights and red car folding roof in black. Mm -hmm. 
and then I dry brushed in silver all the details that originally were shiny, like headlights, pompers and so on. I also didn't like how turquoise car looked, so I dry brushed it in white to make it look like snowy car and at the same time hide some imperfections. And in the very end seal the paint, here I used clear wax. I wanted to add some Christmas decorations to the cars, so I took some four spurs branches and tied these to cars. If you have tiny Christmas trees, they look great here too. I absolutely love how the cars turn out to be. For me, these old-time cars are some special aesthetics and with these blending colors they look like high-end metal models. Maybe you came across these in shops. These babies will be a nice little gift for Christmas and you can also use them as ornaments for a big Christmas tree as they are quite lightweight and shutterproof, which is good if you have small children or cats. The next makeover is a bit more complicated. Here I used this toy horse. It used to be a walking horse and has a mechanism inside to move its legs, but has a broken leg already after a very short time. If your child has some old broken toy horse like this, you can use it or buy some cheap toy horse at Dollar Tree. Since the legs here tend to stand straight, I decided that it would be easier to break off all the legs at once and hot glue them to place in the correct position. I'll place the horse over rockers, so I move apart the legs slightly and also cut off mane and tail, they're very thin and the horse wasn't good with them at all. I really didn't like the shape of this horse. Uh, it has thin legs and plump belly, apparently because of the mechanism inside. Uh, also, it has some carvings and these looks like bones are showing through. In general, it turns out to have a classic silhouette of an old wretched nag. Also, the joints of the legs here do not look very well. And I wanted to hide them. I decided to cover the horse with pieces of newspaper using papier-mâché technique. The toy will act as a rigid base and I'll also be able to thicken the legs a little with newspapers and also hide these carvings on its face. So I'm tearing the newspapers into small pieces, cover the desired area with white glue and glue it with newspaper and then coat it with white glue again to saturate the newspapers well. I got here two or three layers of newspaper, since the base is already very rigid, very thick layer is not needed here. After everything is dry, you can do the mane and tail. I recently made cotton toys and I decided to use spawn cotton here to imitate here. First I made a base of cotton of approximately desired shape for the tail and mane and glue it to the toy. And then I twisted cotton into thin strands and attached these to the top, gradually forming locks so that the mane and tail look beautiful and natural. After that I dried the cotton and covered it again with white glue, a nice thick layer, you can also soak it with acrylic varnish. After that the cotton became very tough. I decided to cut the rockers out of plywood, an option for those who don't like to sew, cut them out of several layers of cardboard until you have required thickness and glue them over with newspapers just like the body of the horse. 
After sewing out, I send the rockers a bit, I'll link my rockers template in the description box as usual. Rockers consist of two edges and three crossbars, one in the middle and two along the edges. And when you assemble rockers, be sure to check that the horse's legs fall onto these crossbars and rockers sit in right balanced position. Now you can glue the horse to the crossbars of the rockers. I used here wood glue. You can also hard glue it to place. Then I took up the saddle and harness. I cut out the saddle from thin foam. I'll also link the templates in the description box. And I attached it to the horse over white glue. Here I messed up a little. It's best to do this before you make the mane. I got a beautiful mane strand right into the middle of the saddle and had to cut all the saddle layers. And later I added a few more cotton strands to hide these cuts. I'm attaching a thin strip through the tummy, it, it seems to be a girth. And I'm adding very thin stripes over the face, one around the face, second one on the neck and behind the ears, and a pair of stripes from nose to ears. I decided to decorate rockers with wooden beads. I'm also adding a thin rope over the saddle, this makes the edge look more neat. I had some wooden snowflakes on hand and I'm gluing these to the rockers, minimalistic and Christmassy at the same time. After that, I'm coating the entire toy with white glue again, so that all absorbent surfaces were covered. I'm going to imitate an old Victorian wooden toy, so the first coat here is dark brown color, the same homemade chalk paint that I used for the cars. The surface here is not very smooth after touching newspapers, and therefore chalk paint is best suited for painting. It's thick and will level the surface a little and also add some texture. The next layer is the ivory color that I had prepared earlier. Here at least three coats are required until we get an even uniform shade without bell spots. I'm painting now only the body and legs, leaving the mane, the tail, the saddle and the rockers unpainted. I let the paint dry well and then I'm distressing the toy. I used here sandpaper with grit 320. Chalk paint is also great for this, you can make very realistic distressing of a chalk paint from light to very worn look, just sand down till you get the desired look. This also helps to make the surface look more smooth. I painted the rockers with green chalk paints. Here I'm not touching the snowflakes and the beads on the tops yet. I also made some parts of the saddle green and I painted top parts of saddle in red. And after that I painted both green and red parts in blending technique I had used for the cars earlier, blending it with chocolate color. This adds to an antique look and I like the worn effect it creates. After that I'm cleaning up with chocolate the mane and tail where I had stained them with white. I'm also painting the bridle in chocolate. And then I'm taking bronze acrylic paint and touching all brown with bronze. Here I paint mane, tail, bridle, saddle edges, snowflake and beads over the rockers and hoovers. I'm not trying to make the color uniform, just try brushing it a little to make the paint looking worn. I'm also distressing the rockers a little to add a gentle antique look. Now drawing the eyes, first I drew them with pencil and then traced with brown paint. Now seal the paint with wax varnish, I'm using clear wax here. Mm -hmm. 
I also decided to make grains. I took some bronze chain for that, hot glue it to the bridle and applied some bronze paint to hide the place where I glue it. This rocking horse is actually looking like Victorian wooden toy now. By the way, you can also make soft mane and tail from some yarn or dolls hair. It's very tough and kids can play with it, not being afraid to break the toy. And it's quite heavy and therefore is rocking nicely. I think it will look great under a Christmas tree and you can mount an old teddy bear over it. And the third makeover for today is this carriage. By the way, it was sold as an addition to the horse. I bought it about six months ago, specially for this makeover, and since then it has been waiting for its hour. First of all, I'm disconnecting the axles. I'm making a sleigh, so I'll not need wheels. I decided to add some cast decorations to the carriage, because the decorations which were over the carriage originally are a bit rough to my taste. I made costs from self-hardening clay, I have here Darwy clay, and molds are from AliExpress, I'll link them in the description box below. The shape looks to me very similar to frosty patterns. I glued the finished casts to the sides of the carriage with white glue. On glossy plastic, like here, the costs will not stick, of course, but while they are drying, they will retain the desired curved shape, and after drying, you can hot glue them to place. I also added some cast decorations to the back of the carriage. To make runners for the sleigh, I took plywood first and cut it with jigsaw, but when I tried them on, I realized that they looked out of place here too rough, so I used some thick wire. I took a piece about 15 feet long, cut it in half and curved the ends. I also cut several pieces, about foot long each, and bent them like brackets. Then I measured out 2 inches along the sides of the brackets and bent the tips forward as if the bracket has legs. I tied the brackets to the runners with a strong thread. Here we got a base for the sleigh. I made one more bracket, slightly bent the edges and tied it to the details of the carriage on which the lanterns hung originally. By the way, I removed the lanterns and didn't like how they looked. Now hot glue the base to the carriage. After that I covered the runners with pieces of newspaper, saturated with white glue, just like I did with the horse, and after that I painted the whole carriage in dark chocolate paint, like the rest of the toys. I painted the seat of the sleigh in red and brown, using the same blending technique that I had used for the cars. First I applied red, and then highlighted the edges with chocolate and blended it out. The seat and backrest here are all convex and rounded, so this blending color is looking very nice over them. Sleigh body I painted in dark blue and left runners brown. After drying, I dry brushed the sleigh with white. As there are many cast elements here, dry brushing highlights them beautifully and at the same time creates really nice frosty effect, as if the sleigh was standing outside in winter night. 
Somewhere I added some silver color to make the frosty look even more pronounced. And in the end, some more glam, I drew pearls over the seat with pearl pen to make tufting a little bit more bright and I also added these silver pearls here and there to the sleigh sides. Now I'm sealing the paint with clear wax as I did for all the other decorations. And there are some holes left at the bottom of the sleigh where axles were originally attached. First I thought to insert some four winter branches there to make a kind of box for winter arrangement, but then I decided to make a small bag. I took a piece of fabric of suitable color, I had this nice cotton in dark red with white snowflakes and sew a simple bag from it. You can also hot glue it if sewing is not really for you. I filled my bag with some stuffing and tied at the top and then put over the holes to hide them. Absolutely love the result. As I already said, you can use this sleigh as a box for winter arrangement, put some candies for kids or decorate it with lots of tiny gift boxes inside, either empty just for a nice look or even filled with some little gifts or stocking stuffers or something. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked the video guys. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell in order not to miss my new videos. Have a great day and bye!